Okay, so this is a little video on the on the example of uh, uh, of so this video is about um, square root of two plus square root of three. All right, that's this whole video is about is that showing this is algebraic and some properties, and we're going to um, uh, illustrate many things that are going to happen in the future via. Um, uh, studying this this one number um, okay so in in the last video we showed uh, that uh, okay so so in the last video we showed that uh, the sum and uh, and product of two algebraic integers are algebraic and so uh, what we want to show uh, so the goals are to show or show the following that um, uh, so square root of two So they satisfy um, uh, this this polynomial x to the fourth minus ten x squared plus one in Q adjoin x. So meaning that this is the the algebraic polynomial they have. This. So this is degree four, um, and so the the roots of this polynomial. So the roots of this polynomial. are the following. They're going to be square root of 2 plus square root of 3, minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3, square root of 2 plus, or I was going to say plus a negative, minus square root of 3, and minus square root of 2 and minus square root of 3. So there's some symmetry going on, and um, and the the point is, is that if you like were to do x minus each one of these and then multiply it all out, then you would get this polynomial so I have to use, I'm going to try and use purple. So if I took each one of these and then I did X minus alpha, you know, X minus alpha one, X minus alpha four, right? So this is alpha one, alpha one, right? So then it, this thing here is this, this polynomial here, F of X. Okay. And these are what are called the conjugate roots. Um, we already saw the, the definition of conjugate when we were talking about um, quadratic uh, uh, number fields. Um, uh, the other thing that we'll see in this process is that um, that although this polynomial here is irreducible, um, it factors the polynomial f of x in q of a join x factors over q adjoined square root of three or q adjoined square root of two. So here, um, this is the equation that we'll have. x squared minus 10x squared plus one. So this thing factors as x squared minus two times square root of three x plus one and x squared plus two times square root of three x. Okay, again, um, we're having this conjugate thing up here. So there's a there's a plus and a minus here, and this again has to do with a, a, a certain group action, which is uh, uh, it, which which is appearing called the, the Galois group of of uh, the field Q adjoined square root of two Q adjoined square root of three. So um, and then the the last thing that I wanted to explain is I wanted to explain why um, uh, so why. Q, so this is kind of a, a, a precursor to the primitive element theorem is that uh, Q square root of two square root of three here is actually equal to Q square root of two plus square root of three. Um, all right, and so uh, before getting into that, let me say uh, a, a couple words, a couple things about some things that I'm gonna need to make uh, the computations that I'm gonna do rigorous. Okay, so I need to tell you what the compositum of fields is. Compositum. So if um, F uh, contains, so let's say we have, if F is contained in, I don't know, some big field L, and um, we have two fields here, two intermediate fields, uh, let's say this is contained in L and uh, F L. 
then the compositum of F1 and F2, of, uh, of F1 and F2 is the field, well, F1, F2, and this is the, the smallest field, smallest subfield of L containing both um, F1 and F2. Okay, so it's the intersection of all fields uh, containing uh, F1 and F2. And uh, concretely, so, uh, so the most concrete way to do this is that if, uh, let's say, if F1 is F adjoin alpha 1 to, let's say, alpha n, F2 is, uh, is F beta 1 through beta m, then uh, F1, F2 is equal to uh, F adjoin alpha 1 through alpha n, beta 1 through beta m. Okay, that's all the compositum is. So um, like a, a sub example, is that uh, it is uh, q square root of two square root of three is the compositum of uh, q square root of two q square root of three. All right, and um, okay, so now that we know what a compositum is, I just want to give a little lemma. Uh, so lemma. And this is something you can do for all quadratic extensions. So if so, if f one and f two containing f are two degree two extensions, uh, extensions. So algebraic extensions, and we're going to view the compositum in the algebraic closure, then. Uh, there's two options. Um, so either um, F1, F2 uh, has degree two. What the heck? Has degree two over F and F1 is equal to F2 or um, F1 F2 has degree four over F and, uh, uh, and uh, F1 intersect F2 is just F. So the proof of this is easy. So, so, so the, so if, um, so here's the proof. So, um, <clears throat> so if F1 intersect F2 is F, uh, then there's, there's, um, uh, not much to do. So, I mean, so if F1 intersect F2, if everyone's equal to F2, I mean, this, this one's trivial. So this, this, this is, uh, so let me just say this one here, this is kind of uh, trivial or easy. Um, uh, so they're just the same. And so a de degree two extension is just a degree to extension. It's tautological. Um, the this the next the other one is, is is maybe not so hard, but it's let me just write it out. Okay, so what we if uh, this is true, then uh, then we have that uh, here. F one F two. F. So this is equal to. Uh, well, we use the rule for towers. Uh, let's do F1 here. Okay, and this thing here is greater than or equal to, so I claim that this is this is greater than or equal to two because uh, this is a, so, so let me say why this is true. So this thing here is a non-trivial extension 
And so non-trivial extensions have some degree. And it's um, because it, 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 there's some element of F2 that's not in F1. It's algebraic. So it's going to have degree at least two. Um, and then here, this, uh, so this is over F. And then this one here has degree two, so this is four. So conversely, uh, we have that uh, here. So this is less than or equal to four uh, since, since we always have this. So this is less than or equal to F, the, the product of the degrees. Um, why is this true? Well, you take a spanning set, take a spanning set for this one and a spanning set for this, and the the product of the basis elements are going to be a spanning set for the compositum, and um, and so that gives you uh, an upper bound on on the dimension, right, of of this thing as a vector space. Excuse me, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause real quick. All right, that, that gives a proof of this, this fact here. Okay, so um, now that we're, we're experts in compositums of fields, I want to go back to this example of uh, square root of 2 plus square root of 3. Um, all right, so, so really all, all the things I said are, are summarized and all the things I want to say are summarized uh, here. Um, so... Um, yeah, so so this is uh, this is all I wanted to say. It's all summarized here. So um, uh, so let's go back to um, uh, like so why how do we know that this element is, is algebraic? So okay, so back to the example. So how do we know? Uh, how do we know? Uh, square root of 2 plus square root of 3 is algebraic. Well, um, so first of all, q square root of 2 square root of 3. So this thing is, is um, uh, so we'll actually have, this is q, uh, so this is, this is the compositum of the two fields. And this is actually a degree four extension. So this thing here is degree four, right? Um, since the intersection of the two fields is just Q. And, um, and this is Q square root of two, Q square root of three, Q square root of six, okay? So these are the four, so this is, this, this, this statement here, this is, a, is an isomorphism of Q vector spaces. And the, the basis um, the basis for this Q vector space is um, one square root of two square root of three, and then the product of the two square root of six. And uh, okay, so we know this is a spanning set, and since fr from the statement before, this has to be degree four, so that this has to th those have to be linearly independent. Okay, um, all right, so we know. So now we know that uh, these elements, so for any alpha in, in the set, for alpha here, two here, this thing here, um, uh, this in, in this thing here, uh, so this must have uh, that one, the elements, one alpha, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and alpha to the fourth, uh, linearly dependent. So you can't have uh, five linearly independent elements in a four-dimensional vector space. Okay, so, so i.e. this gives an abstract proof that there exists some a, b, c, d, and e in Q such that, you know, a plus b alpha plus c alpha squared plus d alpha cubed plus e alpha to the fourth is equal to zero. So um, we know that it must satisfy some degree four polynomial. That's the abstract version. So the, the way to get, um, so to, to, to get the polynomial, 
the polynomial. Um, we get what we'll do is is you just kind of multiply all the conjugates together, right? So what we'll do is we take um, uh, x minus square root of two, x minus square root of three. Oh, sorry, this is this is not right. Uh, so we multiply conjugates. Okay, and um, so what you do is you do x minus square root of 2 minus square root of 3, x minus square root of 2, let's say plus square root of 2 minus square root of 3, x uh, minus square root of 2 plus square root of 3, uh, x plus square root of 2 plus square root of 3. All right, and then when you expand, okay, so, so then magically when you expand this out, when you expand this out, uh, so you get, so let's, so you get the following. So, um, so if we, if we did one of them, so let's, let's, so here, let's, let's just do this and I'll try and pass. So this is the polynomial that we end up getting. And, and similarly, if, if we were to, so we just expanded this part out. And then if you were to expand out the other term here, right? So that thing gives you, um, uh, so this one here, so this gives you x squared uh, plus two square root of three, x plus one, all right? And um, uh, and then multiplying these two, so, so then you multiply these two together, which is a bit of work, right? All right. So then after multiplying that out, so you get that x to the fourth minus ten x squared plus one uh, is equal to well, x squared minus two square root of three plus one x squared plus two square root of, oh. You get x squared minus two square root of three x plus one. X squared minus, so is it plus one minus one? Yeah, plus one. Uh, plus two square root of three x plus one. So this is a plus. Okay, so again, um, here I wanna point out that these two, poly, th these two uh, factors here so these are our conjugate. Okay. Um, all right. So that, that kind of explains the statement about factorization that I wanted to explain here. So it's just it's just a it's a it's a it's a computation that you can explicitly do. So this is this um, statement here about uh, so that it factors if if you consider coefficients over q adjoint square root of three. Uh, so Normally, this so over Q, this thing's irreducible. But if you add, add your, if you allow yourself some roots, then this thing extends. Okay. So now, um, now what do we have? So, so, so to prove this claim about these two fields being equal. Okay. So what about equality of these two fields? So. of and Q so um, so what do we have so this thing here is uh, so Q square root of 2 so I'm going to draw a field diagram here This is the degree, this is the compositum of the two fields. This is Q, this is degree two, this is degree two, this is degree two. So this is like the same thing that we did for groups, okay? And so this thing here is degree four, right? So you multiply these two, two degrees together. And, um, uh, and also, uh, so this is one hand. On, on the other hand, uh, so we have a, a subfield 
the subfield is q square root of two plus square root of three. So this is isomorphic to q x modulo x to the fourth minus 10 x plus one. So this thing is degree four, four over q. And so when you have a subfield, right, of a degree four field of degree four, they must be equal. So this is a subfield. So we had this computation, we had this computation. So this thing told us that uh, here, square root of two, square root of three, this is over Q, this is degree four, or we can use this compositum of fields business, right? Um, that's really what we're talking about here. And then uh, this thing here is, um, uh, this dude here is a, a, a sub, so this is a vector, a subspace of dimension four and a four dimensional vector space, so they have to be equal, right? So, so they're both degree four. Four over Q, so equal. So this gives an example of the primitive element theorem. And so, um, just kind of, to, to, so, so let me let me show you also something else that's kind of weird to, to think about. Okay, so um, if you're going to go back and look at um, uh, the roots here, so one weird thing. So maybe that you're weirded out. But one of the weird things that you can see is that um, if you look at the roots, so the roots. Of, let's look at x to the fourth minus 10 x squared plus 1 right so you can solve this via the quadratic formula and you'll get something like this plus 5 so this is a possible root so let's let's actually um, let me let me actually work this out but okay so let me just let me just state this this statement here so this is okay so this is one thing is that there's two different ways to write down the same uh, radical. So th these are the same, these are the same thing. Same number. Okay. Um, and let me just, let's just go through this computation real quick. Um, so if I write y squared minus 10y plus 1 is equal to 0. So this implies So, um, uh, so that's, that's what we're getting here. So this is equal to five plus or minus two times the square root of six. All right. So, uh, so then, uh, so we, here we did Y is equal to X squared. And then w the other root was that, uh, so then we get X is equal to plus or minus the square root of five plus or minus two the square root of six. So if you apply the quadratic formula directly, you get this thing, right? Uh, on the other hand, when we when we worked out what the root was, we got this thing. Oh, we got this thing, and and then we can we can just see that they're the same. So like just let let's just kind of do a sanity check here and and just square both sides. So let's square both sides of this. So. so all right, so if we square both sides, so here we have two square root of six plus five. So this thing, the square root of this squared, right? So this is, well, two square root of six plus five, okay? And then we have the square root of two plus the square root of three squared, right? And this is two plus, uh, two times the square root of six plus three, right? And then this is just, five plus two times the square root of six, all right? So even though the one has nested radicals and the other one doesn't, they can give you the same algebraic expression. Uh, that's all I wanted to say about that. Okay, so that's, that's uh, uh, I guess maybe one final thing that I can point out. Um, and if you're pressed for time, don't, don't listen to this, but is that there's a group action going on. So there's a group called the Galois group 
right? And so G, uh, so we ha we have maps, um, so we have maps here, two maps, sigma and tau, and they're these are Q linear maps, and they go from Q square root of two square root of three to Q square root of two square root of three, and these are automorphisms, so isomorphisms from from the field to itself, so ring isomorphisms. An automorphism is a, an isomorphism to itself. And uh, sigma of, so they operate like this. So they're Q linear. So the only thing that you have to specify is what they do here. So this is minus square root of two, sigma square root of three is square root of three. And uh, tau, uh, so tau square root of two is square root of two. And uh, tau of square root of three is minus square root of three. Okay, and these form a group. So the if I take sigma and tau, this is a group. And this group here is the Galois group of this. Uh, so, so this group here, G, let me just write this out. So this thing is the so-called, this is the Galois group, group of, um, of Q, square root of two square root of three over q and what happens is is that all of these things here so this thing is isomorphic to well c2 cross c2 so these this is an element oh can i write the two here no oh. dang it okay let's write it Okay, C2 cross C2. So this is, you know, there's one copy of C2, which is sigma. There's, so notice if I apply sigma squared. So this is, so like here, sigma of minus square root of two. It's Q linear. So you take, you get to pull it out, right? So you, put, you get to pull out constants like this. And so you get minus minus square root of two, which is just square root of two. Okay, and then it's constant on here. So, um, so you know if you apply it twice you get um you get it back uh you, you, you know sigma squared is the identity is my point and um and so this thing is element of order two this thing's an element of order two and they don't interact they commute with each other and so that makes this group a c2 cross c2 isomorphic to c2 cross c2 and so um and and this is appearing all the time right so um so here, these two things are, are conjugate. So this is a, an application of tau. Uh, of, so, so we did tau of the coefficients of the previous one. Um, these, these two are conjugate. So these are related by tau. So this is one expression. This is tau of the other expression, right? And then all of these roots here, right? So these are the orbit under the Galois group. Right, so there's there's four elements of the Galois group, and there's four roots. Okay, um, and and that's that's kind of what's going on for this this first glance here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna uh, continue with more um, field theory in the next video.